sometimes called supernormal growth model, I think is a much better model than the constant growth model for trying to value stocks. It allows us to get a little more realistic by allowing company growth rates to change significantly from one year to the next. In the constant growth model, we had to assume dividend growth was going to be constant every year. The company would grow up 5% per year forever or 6% per year forever. Companies don't do that. They introduce a new successful products and grow very rapidly. They run into struggles and shrink. Economic growth booms and the company does well. We run into a recession, the company shrinks. Growth rates change dramatically from period to period and year to year. And the non-constant model allows us to do that. When we go through the non-constant or supernormal growth model, we want to do a three-step process. First thing we want to do is forecast dividends up to and including the first year of constant growth. Then we want to use the constant growth model to find the value of all dividends as of the start of the constant growth stage. Then lastly, we want to use our cash flow worksheet to solve for the present value of the cash flows. Now I'm going to go through an example of this process. I'll kind of explain it as I move through it. This video will probably have to be broken down into two parts because it'll take a while to work through this problem, especially as I go through the explanations of each step. But let's go ahead and get started by step one, forecasting the dividends. And to start that, we need an example. So we're going to apply this model to the following company. We're going to assume the growth rates are as follows. In year one, company is going to grow at 30% per year. Year two, they're going to grow at 60%. Year three, 40%. Year four, 20%. Year five, 10%. And then year six through infinity, 4% couple of quick comments on this. This is typical for a company maybe that's introducing some new products and getting ready to really start a rapid growth period. Typically what happens is they grow rapidly for a couple of years and then the market for the product either becomes saturated or new competition comes in and things start slowing down. So we have a rapid increase in growth for a couple of years. Then it starts to slow down but growth is really high. And finally, five or six years out, we've kind of leveled off to a steady growth rate. Another thing I want to mention here is our growth rate assumption from year six through infinity at 4%. I said one of the problems with the constant growth model is it assumes a constant growth rate forever, that this non-constant model is much better because it allows us to have variable growth rates. But once we get out to year six, we go back to the same problem. We assume growth rates are constant at 4% forever. The reasoning behind this is twofold. One, we can't keep forecasting growth rates forever or would never stop. We have to get an ending point to start doing some calculations. Second is that predicting growth rates for companies and stocks is very difficult even in the near term. By the time we get five, six, seven years out in the future, it's almost impossible to predict what growth rates are going to be on an individual year to year basis. So what we're saying here is we can forecast that based on the current economy and the company conditions, what they're doing strategically, where they are relative to their competitors, that they're going to grow very rapidly for the next couple of years. That growth spurt is going to slow down and beyond six years, we really have no idea what the company is going to be doing. Maybe they'll start falling behind. Maybe they'll introduce some new products but we really can't forecast with any degree of precision what's going to happen six, seven, eight years in the future. So what we're going to assume is just a low steady growth rate that tends to match long run global GDP. As companies grow and the economy grows, we should see this company grow a little bit along with it. Now, if the company grows better than anticipated in the long run, the stock price that we come up with will actually be a little too low. If the company ends up doing worse than the average company in the long run, then the stock price we come up with will be a little bit too high. But the key is our crystal ball doesn't extend out beyond seven to 10 years. We can't forecast with any degree of accuracy. So we're just gonna simplify things and say the best guess we can make today 
is that the company will grow at a pretty low constant rate. Now that we're done with the growth rates, we find out the stock just paid a dividend of $2, that's our D0, and that we feel 13% required return is appropriate. So given all this information, what is the stock worth today? Now I'm going to break this into steps, so I'm going to stop the video here and we're going to start the next step with step one, forecasting the dividends up to and including the first year of constant growth.